how are you guys today I'm gonna finish up the uh, tweak video on that build that I did earlier this month for a buddy of mine so um, the last clip that you're gonna see is pretty much um, finalizing the tweaks and the benchmarks that I did on his computer um, hope you guys enjoy it furthermore here's a quick look at the hardware that's in the machine it doesn't have all of the parts in the picture but what's there is basically the um, hard drive processor motherboard um, the power supply boxes and in the picture and the uh, case of course but that's pretty much it hope you guys enjoy have the continuation here after you restart your system go ahead and type in NVIDIA and voila this is what you will have after you restarted your system okay and what I do is um I go ahead and click on this with the anti-aliasing and I enable it and I overwrite application settings for filtering and turn that up to its max and uh, textures and sharpening I go ahead and click that what that does is um, enable those features actively all the time using the graphics chip okay and um, when you actually when you generally start up your um, system and then you turn on simple screen recorder to do any screen casting um, there's a small window that pops up asking you to um, disable flipping and that's a feature within the uh, NVIDIA drivers for Linux that you could activate and deactivate here in the open, OpenGL settings so it has four selections so I, I, I just suggest that you click the one that says yes always and um, that way every time you turn on simple screen re recorder you don't forget because if you'll forget to disable the flipping by just clicking yes and not having it doing it all the time that's when you run into issues with your recording you might have it, audio issues or whatever have you so go ahead and do that so in our display I couldn't show you guys that because um, I had to make that selection in before even starting simple screen recorder all right so that's that and uh here for the uh, server display configuration the x server display configuration will locate whatever monitor that you have connected to your computer so if you have a couple of them it'll show you here and if you want to have your main monitor on the left or the right, you could just, um, what is it, left click or right click? Le you left click and hold it, and then you could move that monitor to the left, right, to the top or the bottom of the secondary monitor. However you have it positioned on your desk, you could position it here within that box. And I have a video showing you how to actually take care of that. And uh, yes, this is connected to my 50 inch LG TV. I only have it running at 60 frames a second. No, I'm not going to do any gaming right now, so why not? So, <coughs> that's that. 
Oh, and um, if you want to see the thermals of your GPU here, you could just click right there and you'll see. 37 degrees, not bad. All right. Now, since we have this graphics driver here installed, I'm gonna do something extra here. You know what? Cancel that. I'm just gonna minimize this one though. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and install go to the uh, Unigen website and the one at the very top should be cool. Okay, HTTPS security. Good, that's what I'm looking for. And they have the products here, and you're gonna go where it says benchmark, and you could download the Haven tool or the Valley tool. I'm gonna go ahead and download the Haven tool. So here you could download the Linux version, just do a general download within the browser, but I like to actually do it via torrent. Is it gonna give me the torrent option here? Let me see. All right. I don't think it's gonna give me the torrent option because I like to torrent the download because it's a lot faster. But I don't have that option here. That sucks. I guess since they did a revision to it, they... Ah, there we go. So, I digress, you can torrent it, so go ahead, click, go ahead and click OK, and then your torrent tool will pop up, go ahead and agree, and open, and there we go. And generally, torrenting is illegal if you're downloading any piece of software that is published and have copyrights on it. This is a published um, tool, but it's given away generally for free. So if you're downloading the free version, you should be fine. Okay? I'm not breaking any copyright laws with this download in a torrent. Alright? I'm not doing anything illegal. So don't nobody just, oh my god, he's using the torrent. Shut up. This is very legal. Shut your mouth. Alright. So, as you can see, generally this is a uh, 273 megabyte file. And you, I didn't pause it or anything like that because usually my download speed is very swift when it comes to that. And what I do when I activate my torrent tool I like to go to this little options menu here and that's an indication that my torrent is completed and that is sweet so you go to your upload speed and I kind of put that to the lowest and leave my download speed at unlimited and the reason why I put the upload to a slower speed is because um, I don't want it doing both at the same time at the same speed because then that slows down your door, uh, download even more so for those of you who actually have a fast internet system then you know it's fine if you want to have them both at unlimited so it be fast both ways but um, anyway I'm gonna go here no not there <coughs> to my downloads folder which will be on the panel so you go to your file system here and it should be in downloads there we go and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna right click ah no go up here mm -hmm. and then go to properties and in permissions gonna uh, give permission wow that's changed that's different I'm sorry guys I'm just flying at the seat of my pants with this and all 
Alright, let me go ahead and run that and see what happens. Alright, this is what I don't like. And I had a discussion in my previous videos showing you guys how to install this, why I don't like this. It's a more antiquated way of installing a program on your system and it takes long it it it's stupid this should be changed so if there's anybody who is doing any programming or designing or engineering for the Ubuntu GNOME side of things fix this um, and how I'm gonna show you what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and open my synaptics package manager and um, I've already installed that and um, when you have your synaptics package manager open just make sure that you don't have your terminal open at the same time because things would just not happen things would not happen that you need to okay while we're here we have the Nvidia driver installed so I would suggest that you guys go ahead and install this the CUDA Nvidia CUDA is that this? alright yeah your CUDA runtime library. Go ahead and install this one at the very top. Okay. And the uh, profile tool. That's actually a tool. You don't want a tool. You want a, a program that's actually going to run that feature on your graphics card. Alright. And NVIDIA CUDA dock right here. Go ahead and install this one. Uh, mark for install all right so those two go ahead and install those onto your system okay and um, you don't know, what I like about <coughs> what I like about the synaptics package manager is that you don't necessarily do have to do one program at a time what else I'm gonna install here is the uh, Intel CPU microcode Um, that right here. Intel microcode. Go ahead and click that. Mark for installation. It's going to install some other dependencies as well as the tool, which sometimes never used at all. And I'm going to add another one to this. System info. This kind of work like um, that CPU-Z pro, um, product. And speaking of CPU-Z, I'm gonna see if I could install the Linux version. No, it's not listed here. It's not um, in the list of dependencies here. So, oh, or one that is actually called I. That's not there either. I'm gonna have to go online and show you guys how to install that. I'll do that in the same video. I'm not gonna make it a later attraction. So go ahead and do your apply those installs. Let it do its thing. That was an additional 172 megabytes. <coughs> And another tool that I use is um, Gparted. This tool here is for making 
changes to um, partitions on any drive, whether the drive that you're using currently or um, a USB stick or anything like that that has an active version of Linux on it that you want to change around some partitions on, you can do that with G-Party. That's it, so I got that, that, and that. That's done. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry, guys. One of the reasons for opening the Synaptic Package Manager is to is to actually download the. Um, Nemo file manager and I use the Nemo file manager because it has certain things in favor of it that the uh, Nautilus file manager doesn't have and Nautilus is being run in Ubuntu GNOME that's the one shortcoming of Ubuntu GNOME that I have a problem with um, there's some other things, other ports that I don't really have an issue because I can make tweaks to it. Um, but as far as the file manager goes, um, when you're running Nemo, it actually causes conflict with some of the performance of the Ubuntu GNOME interface altogether. Like, once I go ahead and activate Nemo, I'm going to show you guys here. Um, go ahead and type in Nemo. And when you click on Nemo, what happens is the desktop icons pops up on the desktop. So if you have active icons, it'll de it'll pop up back there. So I'm going to go ahead and close the Nautilus Manager over here that has that file in there. And I'm going to open it here. Sorry for this long process, guys, but this is just basically how things are. And um, here, within the Nemo config, uh, file management tool, it gives me the ability to go ahead and allow this um, file manager to actually access the permissions of this set file so that I could go ahead and do this. When I double click on the file, I could actually run it in terminal and this is how quickly it works. It opens that said file and places the folder on in the downloads folder. Why is this still not available in Ubuntu GNOME? Get rid of Nautilus and use Nemo and make the adjustments needed for your user interface to correspond with Nemo, please. Nautilus is garbage. Get rid of it. And then in the Haven tool here, you go ahead and click that and then click run. All right, boom, there we go. And I'm gonna run this benchmark. And uh, go to settings here. And uh, where is a feature for, okay, full screen. I'm gonna go ahead and click that. Make that check go away. Boom. Now it's running in windowed mode. And I'm gonna go ahead and switch the resolution to a low resolution. I will say to that resolution and okay it. Boom. So that way, Wait for it to make it make its adjustment. That way, I could have this window active so that you can still see the performance of the CPU, and it's not using much memory at all. And as far as far as the thermal threshold, it's showing 62 degrees Celsius there. And I'm gonna go into the sensor settings right here and enable the NVIDIA thermal tracking feature. 
So when I click there again, you can see the GTX 950 is at 65 degrees. So that is pretty much an accurate reading here and there. All right. Now from the looks of this video here, I don't see any active tessellation. So I think I go into uh, settings here again. Oh, and the anti-aliasing is also off. So I could go ahead and change that to two. that give it a second so that it could go and um, I think in quality okay it's at high and I'm getting some major hiccups with the uh, frame rate there and the frame rate is actively up in the hundreds actually which is astounding for the graphics card that's in here all right so I believe I have to go ahead and close I have to go ahead and close this right now and within the um, Haven benchmark menu right here where it says tessellation you can see it's disabled I'm gonna go ahead and enable that to I'll just do normal and uh, anti-aliasing I'll do two and the resolution I'll I think I'll take it up to that oh come on the sensitivity with this <laughs> the sensitivity with this keyboard guys my all right guys there was a little bit of an issue with the clip at the end here um seems like some of the file got corrupted but i'm still going to show you guys the video of the haven benchmark running but unfortunately it's not going to be on my buddy's computer i just want you guys to see what the difference is with the tessellation on the screen um, don't like compare this portion of the video to the one before it because of the flaw I had in the video I won't be able to present you guys with the benchmark the remaining benchmark video that I had laid out for you guys I apologize for that but um, here we go just to show you guys what the tessellation looks like this is actually on my computer so that you can see when the tessellation is actually active when it's running you will see that there is a uh, difference in the way that the rocks look on the ground and um, some of the columns and stuff when it get when the camera gets really close as you can see here with the active tessellation you can see how the rocks are more pronounced even the grass have a little bit more of a uh, lifelike effect to it having the tessellation active like I said guys I just wanted to apologize for the remainder of the video I'm, I have no idea what happened but um, just to give you guys an idea of what it looks like, I, you know, I felt like I had to present something to you. And uh, this is pretty much it. 
so I'm not benchmarking the actual graphics card, I'm just giving you guys a sample of what the tessellation looks like active on the system. If you look at the video in this portion of the video, you're going to see a lot of jagged edges and stuff like that. As you can see in this, this portion of the video, on my video card, uh, which is a lower end 760 compared to the 750, the seven, the uh, 750, the 950. I mean, that's in my buddy's computer. Actually, outperforms the GTX 760. Um, when you have tessellation active in any game that you play, even with um, anti-aliasing, you know, the, it, it's it runs a hell of a lot smoother on the 950 than it does here. As you can see, there's a little bit of frame stutter in this. As it's panning forward, left or right, you will see how, you know, there's a slight stutter in the video. And this portion of the video on a 950 sample before, the edges were really smooth. Now you can see how jagged the rocks look up close. That's the act of tessellation. Alright guys, there it is. Again, my apologies, I'm going to end it right here. But again, my apologies for the video not having that demo for you guys to see, but it's pretty cool how, you know, the 950 actually outpaces the 760 even though it's supposed to be of a lower standard than the 760 but as far as um, the generation of graphics cards it's it better outperform it but, um, thanks again guys and um, I'll see you guys later see you guys on the next one all right peace out